we are focusing on Keith Harvey, who not long joined our team. Um, it's, <laughs> he's going to tell you an awful lot more about himself. But yeah, it's certainly been um, an interesting few months for Keith joining our team um, and then, you know, virtually going straight into home working. But um, Keith, just kind of, uh, we always start off by just asking people to tell us a little bit about themselves, but the, the role as well. So do you want to tell us a little bit, a bit about you? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm a recent graduate from my master's. Um, this is what I like to call my first real adult job. Um, I've had lots of, you know, part time positions and lots of getting you know roles to get me experience over the last few years. But this is my me stepping into the big, scary adult world without um, the support of any education systems. Um, and it has been a bit of a roller coaster and um, started back at start of February um, and I think I got a month in the office and then we went into lockdown so this is my office this is my normal <laughs> um, and yes I mean I don't think anything could have prepared me from doing all of that totally new role from home um, but the team has been really supportive in the office and out of the office um, and I mean my luckily for me my role with the chamber has been pretty much already in the virtual world so it was quite easy to adapt it into that setting and it's made getting a hold of people a lot easier um so my role with the chamber is to organize international trade missions as my primary role um and there's no international travel <laughs> these days so we had to really change up what we wanted to do so we've along with the chamber network we've made them virtual um, so hopefully we'll be getting our first virtual trade missions going in September. Um, so only a month away now. Um, I'm also supporting Katie and Vince, our other two international team members with export documentation and certificate of origins, uh, providing support to the Brexit hub and making sure all of our members are prepared for whatever comes in January and making sure everyone's ready for that. Um, keeping an eye on the airwaves and making sure any relevant information for trade deals comes through and gets to our members and then just supporting the team and our member outreach. So it has been quite a varied role, but quite enjoyable as well and quite an easy one to adapt to homeworking, I think. Well, you give me a very interesting segue at my next question, which is what do you like best about what you do? Is there a story to it? Uh, I'm loving interacting with people in different countries. Um, I've always enjoyed that anyway. That's always been something I've enjoyed from my studies and just I love going different places. So although I don't get to go anywhere right now. I get a little window into other countries, which is always fun through the virtual um, conversations. The connection problems can sometimes be quite interesting and time differences is quite funny. Um, and making sure you don't mispronounce someone's name is always good fun. Just want to go in and just apologize right away. I'm really sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Can you please just tell me? <laughs> I'd rather just be honest and go, I have no idea what how to pronounce your name. It's, I mean, it's when you read a name and say a name and if it's from a different country, it's totally different. Um, so those have led to some interesting moments, um, I think. Um, but no, it's definitely my favorite thing about the role is just interacting with an L interacting with such a small, intense group of members. Um, I know a lot of the rest of the team interact with very broad groups and they're doing a lot of larger events, but with international trade missions, they're a very narrow focus. So I get to develop really close relationships with a specific few members and so in, in other chambers, and I get to meet like very um, individuals who are very particular to my role um, rather than such the broad spectrum that I know some of the team do. So yeah, that's been quite good to develop those very personal relationships. Brilliant. OK. Um, what's your favourite thing about Dundee and Angus? Uh, the variety. Um, I mean, I'm not originally from Dundee and Angus. I'm from across the river in Fife, but um, my family are all from our broth. So it's the I really enjoy the variety of Dundee and Angus. I like that you've got the city where there's never, you know, there's always something to do. You're never bored. But I like that I can you go, hop in the car and 10 minutes later I'm out in um, you know, coastal paths and you can go a bit further, like half an hour and you're in the glens and uh, you can go and see historical buildings and places like our bro from Montrose and just you can go to the cliffs and um, there's just such a variety. I just really like that, that, you know, you don't feel like you need to go on holiday or abroad. There's just so much to see in such a little area. So and I like that it's really sunny compared to a lot of places and especially from Fife, which was really quite well, damp <laughs> and cloudy is that's really the best way to describe five. So I, I like that I've you know moved not even an hour from where I grew up and it, the weather is totally different. 
so that's and I and I love being next to the water that's always something I've enjoyed so yeah I, I and I'm I'm interested in obviously what you're saying about the weather I'm wondering if that ties into my next question which is about your favorite time of the year so do you have a favorite time of the year and what is it and why um for me it's always been the summer um I just really enjoy I'm a I'm a big big cat and I like lying out in the sun and just taking soaking in the sun I like going in adventuring um I always like my best holidays in my life have always been in the summer so that's really just kind of always just hit me like kind of really taking me out of it and I love just seeing like I like that Scotland does have quite a nice summer and I don't get cooked alive um <laughs> with my ginger hair so it's it's a good it's a good balance I guess um I do love it too far I love something about every season in the year but summer has always been the perfect the perfect season for me mm-hmm. I mean, we're recording this in August and it's been just the strangest few months ever, hasn't it? You know, and I've been talking to people about lockdown and what they're missing most. And we're beginning to to kind of come out of lockdown slowly but surely. And then there's there's threats of us kind of having to kind of maybe go back into a bit of lockdown, although we've not experienced that locally ourselves. But what's the thing that you are missing most during lockdown? <sighs> that's a hard one I think quite a few little things I've noticed that I miss I miss um just going out to see a few friends more easily and going around to people's houses that was I mean thankfully that started to kind of ease off and I can just go around and see like you know the odd person now which is really enjoyable um I miss big family gatherings it's not something I thought I would miss but it's something I definitely do miss. Um, I miss having all the family together, all sitting down for like a big meal. And with the weather, like we've had really good weather this um, summer and that would normally be like barbecue time. So, you know, we'd normally set up a barbecue and have a big barbecue. We've not had that this year. So that's maybe quite, you know, we've we've had takeout barbecue from people's houses where we'll stop by and they'll have something prepared and then you can social distance in their garden and eat a burger with them. But um, yeah, I miss that the most. I miss those kind of like smaller things that always felt like, you know the the annoying like I've got to go and see my family this Saturday but now it's actually the one thing I do genuinely miss so yeah it's probably the only thing though I don't miss going out but like for big nights out or anything like that I don't miss any of those encounters I've actually enjoyed the excuse of go- not having to go to things like that but yeah family stuff's what I miss. And you obviously um had, your gran had her birthday and you had a sort of socially distanced um time with your gran but I bet that didn't include hugs because we probably weren't at that stage so not back then no yeah. so that was a that was a hard your one your gran a hug <laughs> yeah that was a hard one um for everyone so I mean and she's lives by herself these days and we're all she's the only one really in our growth now everyone else is getting moved away so that was hard um but and like how we did it was I visited her a few times and she's got a nice little summer house so she'll sit in the summer house and you can like stand outside the summer house in the garden so like there is good ways to do it but yeah that was that was hard um so having one-way systems for the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, has your work changed during the crisis and that's interesting question for you given what we talked about and and the kind of the start of your role but you know how has your role changed during these times and what what does that mean then that the future holds it has i think the expectation changed is the best way to describe my role because i i've spent longer in this way of working than i did in the previous way of working um the biggest changes have been not meeting people physically um although as i've already discussed we um worked with really small groups for the international trade missions you still meet with a lot of those people and I remember like for like the two, three weeks before um, lockdown, we had our Dubai trade mission coming up and you people were physically coming in to discuss it with you, what their goals were, who they wanted to meet with. And you were sitting with them, having like a cup of coffee, a biscuit and just chatting. Those things are totally gone now. Um, a lot more weirdly, I don't know why this has changed, but there was a lot more phone calls before lockdown. And um, it was a lot busier in that sense, whereas now a lot more p- people tend to have went, kind of went more into emails. I've noticed that people are a lot more happy just to go um, to talk via email. I don't know if that's they don't have a good setup in their home and working environment, if there's dogs barking, kids running around and screaming. So I think a lot of people have decided that to them that feels the more professional way to present themselves. Um, but the main the other big change has been not I had quite a few invitations to go and see sites to see this is what we're this is what we do work with and this is what we want to take to these um, countries for the missions and you can't go and see them now. Um, that's a really weird big change in the role. Um, 
I think that going forward, it's totally changed the way these missions work across the chamber networks. Um, everyone was really quite worried what would a virtual trade mission look like and would people be interested? And I think, if anything, people are more interested because it's a lot less commitment financially and um, just time-wise. You don't have to commit a whole week to going abroad. You can commit two days to a couple of webinars and there's not really any financial investment into them compared to what you would without hotels and flights and um, you know your living expenses when you're out there. So I, th it's be, I think this is going to be something that stays really for virtual, like the virtual trade mission I think will always be a precursor now um, for trade missions because it's just such a good way to make those first connections. Mm -hmm. And when, as as we were saying, you know, we're we're beginning to come out through phases um, of lockdown, aren't we? Um, and you know, Scotland is is kind of doing things at its its own pace. But when we're really more freely able to get out and about, what's on your lockdown escape bucket list? I really, really, really want to have a murder mystery party. <laughs> I love dressing up. I love those kinds of things. Um, I like getting a bunch of people all together, all doing stupid voices and trying, um, all pretending to be Inspector Clouseau and doing ridiculous accents. So I just love things like that. That's what I really want to do. Um, and I know that Donna, our team, is talking about doing a virtual one. So I'm really excited for that. I think that would be so much fun. Um, I also really want to just go away for a weekend or something and like just I I do quite enjoy going someplace that's like a hotel with a pool and just relaxing and obviously those kinds of things have not been happening because especially with like things like a pool and that's what I would really love to do but I don't expect to get to do that until next year um but yeah I miss those things and I miss I really hoped that come new year they would we'd be back to more normal but I'm not holding my breath because I love a Kaylee I love going out dancing in the air and things like that. And I'm I'm sad that I don't think that'll happen. So I just have to have like a little Kaylee in someone's living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although we could probably do an outdoor Kaylee, all that kind of, you know, um, linking arms with other people exactly. and stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, and you, it's, yeah it's, it's just interesting what you, you kind of like to do that, that, you know, you just go, I'm not sure I'm going to manage that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I always still do. I still do first footing. I spend three days going around people's houses and seeing everyone. So I, I'm, I think that all that those things will be fine. You can still go. You know, you can go into people's gardens if the weather's not awful because it will be New Year. Or you can go inside some people's houses if there's only if there's not too many of you, and you can sit and have you know a drink and catch up for the year because we have a lot of um, cousins that we go and see, and that's the, like the one time you you see them, you all sit there and you chat for you, and it's like right, see you next year, and then you leave. Um, so I hope those things will go ahead um, and I really, really hope that the lockdowns um, like I'm, I'm loving in Scotland that we are taking it so cautiously because then it means those future events aren't as at, at risk. Whereas I was, I was always really worried that of getting a really big second wave, whereas I feel like it's been managed really well now to the point where that seems less likely um, to have it. You know, I don't think we'll be overwhelmed by a second wave and a lot of people are more used and a lot more careful now of just about little things. and. You know, it's the simple things like washing your hands and wearing masks that does just really help prevent the spread. And I just like how cautious we've all been. OK, um, just so just to kind of finish things off, then um, if you've got a message for everybody that's kind of watching this about the things you've learned about the world of work and business, what would that one message be for other people? Ask every single question that comes into your head. <laughs> just ask every question. There are no stupid questions. And although you might be worried or annoying people, it's the only way to learn. Just anything that pops into your head, just ask someone. And if they, tell, and if they look at you like you're an idiot, it's like, well, now I know that question. I never have to ask it again. So <laughs> but that's how you learn. You learn from your mistakes and own your mistakes. Just, you know, if you, if you make a mistake, put your hand and go, I made that mistake. I'm not going to make that mistake again. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with making a mistake. Just don't make it again. <laughs> Um, and we talked a bit about virtual trade missions and um, do you want to talk a little bit or highlight some of the ones that we're going to be working on this year so what are the places and and how do people get in touch with you to find out a bit more about how to get involved yeah definitely um i mean so far we have plans to do outward missions to dubai um in the uae we're looking at sweden and denmark still confirming the best city for them but if it's a virtual mission we can go quite widespread with those so more regional of anything uh, we're looking at the netherlands um more likely or not focused on rotterdam um to combine 
and kind of share the um, lessons learned from circular economy with um, our other colleague Vaso. Um, we're looking at doing a trade mission to Virginia and um, potentially centered on Alexandria because that is one of Dundee's twin cities. Uh, and we are also quite excited to um, have an inward mission coming from India. Um, Chennai is the region. So there's loads of great opportunities with all those regions. Uh, pretty much any sector will get covered now um, with such a widespread. And if anyone wants to get in touch with those um, and get involved in those missions, just um, go onto the Chamber website and go on to either the missions themselves, they'll be in the international section on our events, or go on to the team and look at all of our wonderful photos from dressing up and just click on me and you'll get my email address and just pop me an email anytime. And I'm always thrilled to talk about our missions and just kind of engage with people. So That's brilliant. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so if you've been paying attention and, and reading through our series and, and watching our take a seat interviews this was one of the ones with our team so it's Keith Harvey from the international team uh, thanks so much to Keith for taking part and um, we're, we're going to be doing more of the the team and, and getting to to know the team so he's first up he's well volunteered much appreciated Keith um, thanks so much for taking part um, and we hope you enjoy the rest of our videos all on our YouTube channel so thanks very much thank you